Peace. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, the Anarchist. I'm back once again. I'm with my boy, Invisible Katana, in the building. Hey, my boy, Mr. Fantastic, in the building. Hello. And we are a few nobodies talking about nothing. Where the, we talk about nothing. <laughs> what the f? <laughs> Yo. Hey, man, that's all I got. It's the garage outside, man. Sorry. We'll be right back. Oh. All right. Such an hey, asshole. Yo, peace, y'all. What up? What it do? It's your boy, the anarchist, man. I'm right here with my boy, Invisible. Yeah, the whole intro. I, we can oh. keep what we have. All right, all right, man. All right, let's, let's get into it. Last two episodes was half trash, half interesting. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I was a, per, I was, I was an outside viewer listening to this podcast, and I had a lot of critiques. You understand? But what I will say, man, you know, y'all did a good job, man, first of all. That thank was a real good thank job thank without you. me. I thought y'all was going to fold. <laughs> real shit, I was just going to text y'all, like, look, pack it up, bro. Right? <laughs> well, and you're the one who, who texted us, like, what, an hour before? Oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, and we didn't get in your personal shit and ask why. <laughs> hey, man, ain't nobody trying to hear a podcast without the anarchist. <laughs> you feel me? But that was interesting, man. You got into some heavy stuff, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got into some relationship stuff, man. So we going to dive into that. I'm about to get all up in there. Pause. You fun? You understand what I'm saying? Mm. You understand. But yeah, hey, it's a lot to talk about. Mr. Fantastic want to talk about some bullshit Christmas shit, so we're going to get into that. <laughs> but first of all, man, just stuff that's going on. Have you have uh, either of y'all heard about the Grammys? What's going on with the Grammys? No. Not since the Get Out stuff. Yeah. Uh, and that's, no, no, that's the, that's uh, the, that's the that, Globes. Wow, see? It's, honestly, see, <laughs> it's all bullshit honestly. anyway, man. <laughs> Grammys is uh, music, right? The music, Grammys, yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, you know, with all the nominees with the Grammys, I guess it's a blackout. All these black artists, you know, you got Kendrick Lamar, you got SZA, you got Rhapsody. Who's heard of Rhapsody? She's a, you know, a rising mm-hmm. rap artist. Uh, all these female uh, rap artists. Just a lot of Bruno Mars. A lot of black people. Uh, you know Bruno Mars is a black. Bruno Mars is black. He's a uh, black and, uh, what else? Island, some Hawaiian. Who the, who the fuck cares? <laughs> you know, he's beige, whatever. Give him that. <laughs> he's beige. <laughs> what the? <laughs> But yeah, uh, but yeah, man. Just you know, besides him, alright, you don't want to count him. Anybody? I, else? I, that wasn't me. That was the thing I saw on Facebook months ago. I was like, oh, um, said he wasn't black. Cultural appropriation. Oh yeah. Well, you know, people say uh, Drake is a culture vulture. He's not nominated, by the way. I don't think he submitted. But what do you think about that? I thought Drake was black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, culture, well he, is he half? I don't know. Well, he's know. Drake. Is do you listen to Drake music at all? <laughs> not really not. What about you, Mr. Fanta? You listen to Drake? What? Nah, because I knew him as the guy from Degrassi, so I can't take him seriously. Really? You don't listen to He's a, like a huge artist. You don't listen to Drake? I mean, I know some of his songs, like, um, um, I like the Starboy with him on it and stuff like that, but I mean, no. I mean, my, the rap I like is like Childish Gambino. I really like him. Um, I really like, uh, I don't know, I kind of stay in the mid-2000s, so like Ludacris. And you still listen to Ludacris? Yeah, I still do release wow. therapies on, on all my playlists. Wow. Yeah, it's That's one of my favorites. Up. Yeah. Yeah, man, dang, but shit, Drake, man, you know, you ain't getting no love on the podcast. <laughs> Outside but... of Hotline Bling and all the memes yeah, from that. You know, all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I mean, he's all right, but how can you take him... I... How can you take him seriously when, like, he was this whiny bitch... I mean, on I never a TV watched show for like so. eight years. He's like, oh no, I'm gonna miss the basketball game, guys. Like, you know, they like all of a sudden he's gone for like a year and then he's this the guy. Like, I well, I don't know, man. Be true to yourself. So which one's try? I, I, I mean, the thing is, you can see you judging Drake from a standard of music from a, an old school standard. You know what I'm saying? If you keep your ear to what the kids are doing, to what the, the streets is now, which is the internet, those are the streets. Mm-hmm. Drake was a pot is a pioneer for what he did because he was one of the people that's an example of somebody who had previous quote unquote clout, which is a word, uh, you know, notoriety yeah. Yeah. from a show. And then when he decided to start rapping, that's kind of how he got on. This is notoriety. Oh, the guy from the degree. And I think he does an interview where he even says like most of his first fans were people that wanted to clown him and say, hey, yeah. you know, this is the this is the kid yeah, from yeah. Degrassi. And yeah. he turned a lot. of was like, oh, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was a great um I thought, you had, I thought you had great music. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's one of the first people to do that to where he people already knew him from the show Degrassi. And then when he came out with his music, people thought it was so good that it elevated him. And then he started working, uh, mm-hmm. signed with Cash Money, met with Wayne. And then from there, we get Drake today. Uh, now you have a lot of artists, and especially in the rap world, but I'm pretty sure it's everywhere, pop, uh, who 
Well, the, Disney's a prime example. I mean, how many artists have come from a Disney show? Right. Or, you know, I mean, I, I get I get that. But all of them are trash, too. Like, in the same breath, <laughs> you're going to be like, Drake is awesome, Drake is ice awesome, but Miley Cyrus is, is sucks, right? Well, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, Are you talking about me or are you talking about just a regular <laughs> fan? Uh, I'll, I'll call Drake out. I'll say this song is hot, this song is trash. You know what I'm saying? Overall, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drake mm-hmm. makes actually good music. Most of his lyrics is just too whiny and simpy for me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I don't. I can't see his perspective on That's a lot of things. That's the rubbing off, but anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Besides that, man, we ain't gonna get too much into the Grammys. But yeah, Black Power is Black People's Year for that. So I guess that should be a good thing. Who knows? Nobody watches the Grammys anyway. <laughs> we just we just hear about who won. So that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, most award shows though at this point. I mean, yeah. exactly. Who who hey, gets man, even the Oscars? We talked like about that. it. Middle age, middle middle aged, older people do. Right. I mean, it's a to me, it's like a dying thing. I mean, I remember being a kid and being excited. To watch that stuff like when eminem uh did his thing with elton john and like all that stuff like reward shows um for us was entertainment and now it's just it's and just i think the part of that is um because i hear the same thing i typically hear the same thing all the time is internet you know it was like just like the oscars with with music awards and movies movie awards that's when you saw those people it was either in the movie or maybe that music video mm-hmm. or it was at the award right. show right we just and got too much access yeah to we got too yeah, much you, access it's just like all right you well, see them every day who the fuck that? cares yeah. if they had an award you know what i'm saying that shit gonna be boring yeah. as fuck anyway yeah and i'll look at the pictures and the cool videos and i'll know what happens the next day i don't exactly. need to watch yeah. i don't need to watch hours that. later they're gonna be instagramming it yeah. Facebook and twitter and everything so yeah, like any movie or any song you probably know like there's those couple of real sleeper hits maybe that you'll find out because of the awards it's like oh i didn't know that indie film came out or yeah. it wasn't an indie film or something mm-hmm. for the most part you'll know what movie what song came out who did what and exactly when it happened so yep so, so all like right that. besides that man that's music rape alert rape alert is rapist on the loose y'all yes. already know uh your boy uh it's two people i want to out on the rape alert it's, just, it's your guy uh russell simmons aka hustle simmons mm. And a uh, 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 Michigan alum, uh, who is it, Senator John Conyers, yeah. since he's come out. So it, I feel a ways about both of these things, man. But I want to get y'all thoughts. What do you think? It's just like... It's it's the fu- it, it, it's like they hit a package away for so long. And now yeah. it, it, they busted the door open. I mean, it, Every rock we've talked about this. Over. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, we've talked about this. Like the floodgates have opened. And it's great to see because I think it's changing the way people look at relationships and human beings and the way women really are treated Mm -hmm. because you know six months ago it's like oh women are finally getting some stuff done and they're protesting again we're doing some stuff and now it's like we've discovered this part of our society that everybody kind of turned a blind eye to in my opinion you know i've got four daughters and i'm making them strong independent women and i was kind of excited to put them in this world because i really thought they were treated differently and this stuff that's coming out is making me realize that there's still a lot of work to do Mm -hmm. uh, with powerful people um and i'm not mad about the people coming out anymore what i'm mad about is how it's getting handled some of it's getting brushed under the Mm -hmm. rug our president of the united states is still backing someone who's being accused of that stuff Mm -hmm. listen when you whatever action it is you pay for the consequences and we all know that we've made bad decisions and we've all paid for that. Sometimes not as bad as we should, but for the most part, right? We've paid yeah. for those consequences. Mm-hmm. And Kevin Spacey's staying in a posh $1 million a year resort, basically, mm-hmm. to get over his addiction. Hey man, I've yeah. seen addicts and I've seen people like that and they aren't posh. They gotta, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why aren't we using that money to help those people too? Why? because someone made a movie that touched someone's heart, they get special treatment. Yeah, you know, Like, I, it pisses me off. It makes me so mad. It I makes me so mad. I don't like how a lot of people treating it, they spin the word, uh, well, why do you know, why they come, why see all the floodgates are open? They're all coming out now. Why didn't they come out? Yeah, because, like, yeah. because, because they couldn't, like, because now's the time. Right. Just like when the 60s happened, well, why didn't it happen earlier? Because it just didn't, because it happened then. You know, well, why was immigration such a big deal 10 years ago and letting people come over here and, and trying to be a melting pot again? Because it wasn't, a, you know, because it just, it's, yeah. it just happens that way. It just happens that way. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, are there, there. going to be people who come out of the woodwork that it may not be true? Sure. That's what happens with anything. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't discredit what the fuck is being discovered. Because right. what the fuck's being discovered is that a whole industry 
a whole world thought that it was okay to sexually abuse people and rape people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because and people knew about I mean, oh, it. Just it, it baffles yeah, my and mind. Then some of the people that's coming out and defending some of the stuff, and it's just like cut this shit out. Like yeah. you know, just yeah, cut- there's always going to be defense regardless of what happens there tends to be somebody like it could yeah. be the craziest person there would be someone like murderers and charlie yeah. manson yeah. and you know like there's, there's always someone those who's in that people. weird mindset of that killer or rapist or whatever it is they'll be like maybe it was this or just defending yeah. them or giving them a pass in general without even trying to defend it like that stuff yeah. just it just it feels like they're not getting their their due yeah I, yes. I, I don't i don't know about that because like Let's say something comes out about work for any of us about that. We're fired. We don't have a job. We don't have an income coming in at all. Yeah. Kevin Spacey's still getting his royalties. Mm. Kevin Spacey's staying in a really nice place trying to get over it, whatever. That director guy is doing the same thing. You know, Bill Cosby was able to just kind of shed away and live off his royalties because people are still playing the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's, it's crazy to me that people in entertainment are people bigger than us, I guess. Mm. have a different rules man they just have different rules mm-hmm. yeah and then there's always that element especially with movies or uh, TV shows like the Cosby thing it always ends up being like well crap how do we punish this person like when the Cosby show was being taken off it's like how do we punish this person without punishing like n- the nearly dozen other main actors on the right. Cosby show and it's like crap it it's such a weird spot to be in to be like I don't want to support this person anymore but then it's like well that totally screws over yeah like their uh, you know, baby driver wanted to see that so bad I wanted to yeah, see I, saw, I, I, saw I wanted that before yeah but. I want to see it so bad and I'm not going to yeah. I, he's not getting a dime from me he's I'm sorry mm. not getting a dime you know because then he tried to use being bisexual and gay as a defense yeah, what the fuck? yeah that was fuck you, you man yeah. are you fuck fucking kidding that? me what is that what are we back in 1960 is bing crosby gonna come by you and say yeah my kids are liars too because i didn't beat them for 10 years yeah you right. did bing crosby but you know like it's it, 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 it's, it's i mean not, yeah. i make a joke about bing crosby but that's a well-known fact that he was a child abuser to his children and a woman beater and yet he yeah. still gets played on the radio for Christmas music. My wife's probably watching White Christmas right now. Hmm. You know, we watch it every year. Mm-hmm. And um, it sh- it, it's crazy. It, it's absolutely insanity to me. All right, so that's a good transition. Let's talk about this Christmas bullshit. <laughs> Let's talk about this fraud formerly known as Christmas. I'm ready to go in. I'm about to get Christmas the fuck out of here. Watch. You You about to see how much influence the anarchists have. Because when I say I'm about to get Christmas the fuck out of here, watch what I say. But yeah, man, go ahead and make your case for this bullshit-ass holiday. Mr. Fantastic, you have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm half and All right, you're done. <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> no, good. I'm half and half, man. Like, I'm older now, so I know the fraud that it is. I mean, the Santa Claus that we know was created by Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, before that... Like, um, I'm really into like antique roadshow. And one of the things they do for like Christmas stuff or Santa Claus stuff is if he has a tan coat on, then it was before 1906, uh, in 1908, I think 19, somewhere right around there. Mm-hmm. Because before Coca-Cola came out with their campaign, he was seen as a gnome that wore tan coats and stuff like that. And he was more mm. of a transcendent character than the steadfast character we know now. Mm. I mean, I let my kids, I was telling Terrence how much fun I had, mm. you know, we went to the that free train ride or yeah, we went to a free train ride up here down river and they take you, it's cold and they take you and then it says, welcome to the North Pole and you <laughs> come up to this cabin and then Santa's sitting there. I let my kids sit in a stranger's lap yeah. <laughs> and tell them which what is, they wanted which is like the toys which thing. which two hours ago i was probably telling them hey don't take don't candy from strangers, strangers you know what i mean right. so like um you know and then this whole new thing of elf on the shelf like yeah i'm all into that shit i love elf on the shelf i made uh all their cars look like they were racing um you know we're all into it and what is and elf on the shelf elf on the shelf so it's an elf that you get the night of thanksgiving mm-hmm. and he or she watches the children to make sure they're being good and like does like honorary stuff but also like brings gifts and shit like that so like um i had them be honorary the other night and they op- uh they opened up a bag of hershey kisses mm-hmm. and i opened up a bunch of wrappers and threw them all over the shelf and then rubbed their face and chocolate like i'm taking like an hour out of my life to do this yeah. for my kids right so like 
rubbing chocolate on their face. And then I left a note and I put three Hershey kisses on there and I said, Hey, we got hungry. Sorry for the mess, but here's one for each of you or whatever. But that's the thing, man. It's like that part. I know it's there, but man, same topic. ZZ was so touched by the elves. She made them paper clothes, wrote it, made, uh, my wife write a note thanking them for being with in the house and all that stuff and made them clothes. And so I, we were able to go to the store, pick up some elf clothes because they sell those now. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> magic made her paper clothes turn into something they could wear. And the look on her face, I mean, she FaceTimed me at, at work to tell me like, <laughs> dad, 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 like, you know, and it's so magical, man. And the fact that they believe in that magic and they, and they want, and they, yeah, you they, know, and they, they want it, it yeah. to be real and they embrace it and it's magical. That's fucking worth every penny of it. But this rat race that Christmas has become is fucking ridiculous, dude. I like, feel you. And like, you know, you you making it hard for me to get Christmas the fuck out of here because you actually got a family. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's actually some heart into it. But, man, I, I'm still going with my argument. No, man, I, I'm glad you told me that because, you know, I... I but it my, is. It's a battle, man. I mean, it's, you know, one of the most beloved Christmas songs is a rape song. Mm. Baby, it's cold outside. I mean, literally in the song, he says, why the holdout? Like, why ain't you putting out, bitch? <laughs> You know, like, what the, what? We're going to listen to this? But that, that contributes to the fraudery that I've been telling y'all about. See, this is what happens. And we get into conspiracy all right now. You ready? Let's go. All right. Christmas, this whole concept is bullshit. See, we like to hide it behind this whole, well, you know, it's the Christians and the Christmas. Fuck all that. Don't know what, everybody gets <laughs> gifts and gives gifts for the, you know what I'm saying? For yeah. the same old bullshit. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like what what most people have figured out is that if we can market, we're going to market whatever we can around this concept of Christmas because so many people here and across the globe in America and everywhere subscribe to it. So if I'm an artist and I want to do a song, it's going to be chestnuts roasting, yeah. <laughs> that bullshit. And we, gotta li we have to listen to this bullshit every day. Dude, single. They're running out of Christmas songs. Pentatonix did a remake of an NSYNC Christmas song. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. That is a remake of an NSYNC holiday song. Understand? And like, we were just talking about this, me and the wife. We were walking down the store and they have, you know those white cheddar cheese balls that they have all year round. Mm -hmm. All year round. Big old display with a blue sticker on it with mittens and it says snowballs. The fuck? No. They're white cheddar fucking cheese balls. Stop it. Stop it with your gimmicks. Man, I don't know sell. about no you fucking cheddar cheese, but all I know is... <laughs> you gotta sell. Gotta sell. Yeah. Yeah, man, but that, but that leads to my point. point. Yeah. It's like, yes, when you make things Christmassy. I was uh, I, uh, I was talking with my family the other day, and they was uh, reminding me about uh, how they sell eggnog. And that they don't sell it all year round. Uh, you can, and it's like you never I, even hear about eggnog unless it's exactly. Like, it's like why the fuck would they do that? Christmas, but yeah. they they limit the supply. So when you get around this time, you buying up eggnog. You basically, you know what I'm saying? If you want to sell something, if you a trash music artist, or not even if you a good music artist, people find that you can market things around what people have already mentally and emotionally invested in. That means if I really want to sell a song, I'm going to either sell it around Christmas or fuck, better yet, I'm going to make it about Christmas. So at some point, if it's an okay song, you're going to have to play it. I'm tired of hearing this fucking bullshit music. Yeah, Christmas music is some of the worst fucking we music. played it at work, what, November 2nd? And I'm going like, fucking yeah. crazy. <laughs> I'm yeah, tired like, of shit. Uh, you know, like I haven't been up to the mall recently on uh, Fairlane, but it was the same thing every year. It's I hear thing, ling, yeah, ling, yeah, ling, it's ling, like, ling, well, and that's the thing, man. Think about it. One of the biggest selling bands ever started as an acapella Christmas song. Who was that? The Pentatonix. I mean, they're that's... huge. And then you don't hear about the Siberian Orchestra all year. All year, you could yeah. not hear about it. And then they sell out every year. They sell out. Christmas mm. comes around. You have that. It's like a restaurant that has one specialty. You know, yeah. That's sort of deal. Like Christmas comes along. It's the, you know, it, it's that thing with like out of all the holidays, it's the only one outside of Halloween. It's the only one that actually has music for it. Um, I guess technically if you want to play some like old super old marching music for 4th of July I guess <laughs> yeah. but Thanksgiving doesn't have like a song really well listen to country music they have quite well, a well oh, yeah I guess that's America true. songs but, America yeah, well, yeah, America yeah, yeah. <laughs> now hold my beer while I light this firework sorry that's a that's, that's for another day but <laughs> but okay. yeah you got stuff like that where 
Christmas is always like the big holiday of the year. It's the one where schools are out for two full weeks. TV shows don't come on. It's like this week is pretty much like the mid-season finale or next week. Yeah, yeah next two weeks. And then all the new finale, like mid-winter shows that are starting out, new series and stuff like that. Yeah. Like it's a whole reboot. Yeah, for like watching TV and doing like your normal Monday schedule. Things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that huge break at the end of the year. Like you have you know going into like the three months we have halloween which is just like you know that one night event and so let me ask you when does the holiday season start for you guys like when do you feel like it's holidays for me not until like the week of i'd say or maybe the week before why why is that is that because like traditions kind of start then for you um god that's kind of hard to say if it I guess so. I mean, you know, especially with school, because how it's always like, you know, it's two weeks. But for me, it doesn't really feel Christmassy until, you know, you get about, you know, a couple of days in, because that's when people officially start coming into town and stuff like that. Yeah, so see, I think that's, it's that gathering. That's what I felt. And then I had kids. Holiday season starts right. October 31st, dude. <laughs> Halloween is great. And then after that, it's just it's fun. Hol- it's yeah. just fun, man. Like, we start doing holiday stuff and all that. So, like. And I guess for me, it's just, it's when that holiday is there and then. The next one, you know, like you said, starting yeah. October thirty first, and there's like cool Halloween, plus then a little bit Thanksgiving, and then a yeah. little bit Christmas. So no, plus I married Mrs. Claus, so. <laughs> well, yeah, that's holiday that. baking challenge. Yo, I'm well, done with holidays. <laughs> I'm done. You understand? Done. What? Are you, so what are you gonna do? What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm spending a day with my family. <laughs> <laughs> Open the gifts, right? <laughs> Say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Can't wait for New Year's. No, you I'm know, not, I'm not the, buying the, no gifts. I'm giving my niece a gift. That's it. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. I didn't say. Did I say giving gifts? I said opening. So you're not. So you're also gonna do the other way too, because two way street, man. If you're gonna boycott, you gotta go all the way. What do you mean? You yeah, can't you accept can't, gifts yeah. either. You can't. You, what you mean? I can't accept gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give me a gift. I'm gonna take it. What the fuck wrong with you? <laughs> that's just rude. Come on, that's not, rude, bro. Somebody just give you a gift. No, fuck that, bro. Fuck that. Dude, fuck that gift. <laughs> dude, I need some ideas, man. I can't figure out what the fuck. To get my wife. To get your wife? No, nah, man. Like, we can get her a Tiffany's bracelet and call it a day. She doesn't like, like jewelry. She don't like jewelry. Nope. Like no type next. Of jewelry? Yeah, next. Go ahead. Throw some out. Okay. Invisible katana. I always go with either some sort of specialty like food item. That's always good if there's a unique thing that she really likes that you guys don't plan on getting. Okay. Or, what, what do you mean, like edible right then, or like a gift card? Because like, I gift cards just seem so impersonal to me. Yeah, like, like especially I for the wife. But like more, you were thinking like edible in the moment like um so and that would probably be hard to do because she doesn't like to waste food on special or money on specialty food so next okay um i always go outside the box for stuff like that like i try to do really out there stuff like in the realm of what she likes that's what i typically do so because that's what i was thinking uh like if you say like her favorite thing or one of her favorite things so she loves like disney princesses so i was thinking about something like that but i always get the vibe she's like i don't want you to spend money on me and like I'm a very literal person, I don't buy into that bullshit of like, yes means no or no <laughs> means yes. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm very little literal. You tell me I don't want this, I'm gonna be like, okay, then I'm not gonna yeah do it. All right, that's crazy. All right, so but I heard you say on the last podcast as an observer mm-hmm. that uh, your personality is more when I buy you stuff that tri- that means I love you and your yeah, wife and personality. Yeah, so th- yeah, and so that's what's hard because mm-hmm. like I you know I would have buy her something that means something, but like we talked, I think we talked about it on the last podcast was uh, you know what I did for our anniversary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, and the, yeah, 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 and so like for me. I know she likes that kind of stuff, but it's hard for me to figure that shit out, man. Mm, so you don't like, know if she genuinely just doesn't want anything? Right, and she, she would rather have something that gives her the feels like that, okay. you know? Okay. And um, so, and, and Christmas is really hard for me because, um, so our first Christmas, did I, have I told this story on the podcast? I don't think so. Okay, so our first Christmas um, together, uh, we knew ZZ was coming. And uh, we were really struggling on doing Santa. We, mm-hmm. It was something we talked about, you know, because you guys, well, maybe not you, D, but T, you know, yeah. when you have kids, like, you think about all that stuff and, like, what, you know, what you can fix and what you can do and you're going to be the best parent and whatever, you know, you're all organic food and never go to <laughs> McDonald's. And, dude, my kid, my second youngest right now, asks for burger and fries almost all the time. So, you know what I mean? So, happens, like, it just yeah, happens. Yeah. So. So we were, and I really saw the magic in in Christmas. And so 
um, she happened to tell me like two days before Christmas, so the 23rd. Mm -hmm. She told me she wanted a Cincy stuffed animal thing. You know, she wanted one, and she just told me. And there's no way. Since, yeah. Back, you know, six years ago, Cincy wasn't all over the place quite yet. You know, you still had to go through somebody you yeah. knew, and that kind of stuff you had to order and all that. So um, I was helping out, or I was working at uh, Topsy's, that popcorn place, mm -hmm. at the time. And um, this lady walks in and wants a big canister, and she's only she only wants to spend this much. And I saw her Cincy badge, and I said, well, do you have a Cincy badge? Yeah. Thing. She's like, yeah, I have a, a pig one. I'm like, perfect. I'll trade you. I said, you pay the difference, yeah. I'll trade you, whatever. I'll cover the difference on, on my end. She's like, really? I was like, yeah. And so I got it. And then I called my uh, parents' neighbor. And I said, hey, I have this crazy idea. You're going to write a letter like Santa. And we're going to do it. So I hid it in the back of the tree. Nobody knew. Nobody except for me and Patty, the neighbor. That's it. My parents didn't know nobody. And... Um, I kind of put her presence over there and then it kind of fell out and there there was a letter there, a very elaborate letter from Santa like, hey, I know you guys are struggling with the magic of Christmas and so I got you this. Mm -hmm. It's something you just thought of, you know, to show you that, you know, I'm still real and the magic is there and you want your kids to have that and all this stuff and the pig represents, um, you know, feeding that magic, right? Because yeah. it's a food and stuff like that and it was really beautiful. She cried, it was amazing. Nobody knew it was me for like six months. I would say it was the middle of summer. And we got in a really big fight. And I said, hey, you know what? You know who did that? I did it. <laughs> and so like, I carry that guilt around. I mean, I do. Cause this, this time of year is really hard for me to get her something. Cause I feel so fucking bad about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause when you do stuff out of anger, sometimes it can fuck shit up. Oh, yeah. You know, and so like, I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just don't know what to do, man. Cause I feel like I pulled out all the stops for the first Christmas and then I ruined it. So I can't top that and I can't, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? Back come back from that. But, so all right, here's the thing, man. I'm, I'm, we throwing this out to all the listeners, man. Email us <laughs> what Nate should give or do, right? Yeah. For his wife, give or do or a combination of both. Cause I'm pretty sure three guys sitting in this room, we is never gonna yeah. come to a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we put our and I'm sorry for going on a rant, but like, oh, no, no, yeah, get the fuck out of here. With that, but <laughs> <laughs> to just end this bullshit, cause like I said, we're not gonna get to the bottom of this. Three, three dudes in a room. See what I'm trying saying? To figure, yeah. Trying to figure out a gift for a woman. You know what I'm saying? We gotta get ourselves the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. But, but after that, we gotta get Terrence the fuck out of here, cause you the main one. Ain't about to tell nobody what to get that girl. <laughs> But I have a Hey, man, going? that's fucked that's up, dude. Up, dude. That's <laughs> Welcome back. It's the anarchist, bitches. It's the anarchist. Yeah, I'm about to get I don't you. know how that gift give. <laughs> nah, no, I'm about to get gifts. you the fuck man, out of here. He gave a woman that broke his heart a free trip to Cancun. Like, why? <laughs> like, he is the best gift giver, right. man. Let's help, man. First of all, I gotta say. First, she paid for her house. I wasn't free. Okay, sorry. She did. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. If yeah. I had the money, I would have at the time. Yeah, but I, like, you know, my crappy. I'm a janitor right now. I don't, <laughs> I don't, have, money. I don't have money like that. Hey, keep it real, man. Look, if I had man. the money, but I, 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 I hear the you, money man. that, bro. If you listen to this right now, <laughs> you got to the good part. Because I'm about to get all up in this man's oh, business Oh, man, right now. come on. Leave the poor man alone. Dude. No. It's Shut up. Please. Stay over there. <laughs> Shut up. Sit in the corner. I am in the corner. There you go. So, all right. <laughs> T. Because I, I knew what we were talking about. I'm like, man, I know he wish he was here. Because like, I just knew. I was like, so, what we were talking man, about. Man, come like, on. Man. All right. Be question. I'm playing. I'm playing bad cop. You play good cop. Okay. So, mm -hmm. big question. Cause man, yo, man, Mr. Fantastic, your your questions was whack, bro. No, nah, man, they were not. Like, I'm not gonna be like, well, what the fuck happened then? You was like, no, man, like that, dude. I this ain't 20 minutes, bro. Like, it's just two guys <laughs> venting, and that's what he wanted to vent man, about. So on, I'm not gonna. On, you should have been your barber watcher shit, your <laughs> Oprah shit. He should have been here breaking down, crying right here, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. All right, here we go. That's something we do at a bar over a drink. I ain't gonna fucking nah, man. Come hey, on. He wanted to get into. He like, look, let's do. Because I was listening to the podcast, and if you mm -hmm. haven't heard it, go back and listen to it. He's like, oh, oh man, I don't know if you want to get. He like, go, go ahead. Go. I'm like, yeah, go. Oh, 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 oh. But anyway, man, I'm here, man. 
And you know what? I got a, you know, I had a, I had a, I had a dog in that race, man, because I wanted to see y'all make yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I, know. I wanted to see, I wanted to see Black Love live, man. The hell, you running the communities, man? <laughs> 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 the <laughs> but man, five years, bro. Yeah, it would have been five and uh, yeah, February and uh, on Valentine's Day, yeah. Man, oh my god, and it's cheesy like that too? Well that Damn that dude! <laughs> it's cheesy like that? Oh bro. Damn. Damn. I'm, I'm trying to be good yeah, cop, but why <laughs> what? Now I need to know the story. Valentine's Day? Let's do it. That okay, that was totally random. That was because in the beginning, um I was one I was trying to be like, alright, so are we And like, this was uh, she used to be your boss, yeah? Yeah, so go like way back. I used to work at Fairlane Mall because I went to U of M right across the street. So I was like, all right, I'm going to school here. So I'm going to just try to get a job at the mall right across the street. So I used to work at Hollister. Okay. So that's where I worked. I was there, I think, for like a year or two years before she got there. And then basically I just asked her out. Like I had to ask her like two or three times because she was my boss. So, you know, <laughs> was it? But, what was it? She went have You had there. balls to ask more than <laughs> once, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How did you ask? Well, the first time, well, I, I made sure nobody was in the room. Because I was like, I'm, well, I mean, Oh, you didn't put it over, like, clean yeah, up in aisle one. But <laughs> also, uh. <laughs> yeah, so, I had asked her, um, because I used to do, like, stock, which is, like, folding the clothes in the back room. So, it was just me and her back there. So, I, like, leaned over and I asked, I just asked her, I was like, would you be interested in going out? And she, and she was like, <laughs> hold up, hold up. So, so what you're telling me is this, like, six-foot man who's a nerd is standing and he's like, Hey. Well, I leaned over. I was looking around. <laughs> hold on, you're looking right back. I'll be like, hold on, is anybody here? Excuse me, would you be interested? <laughs> <laughs> like you're trying to solicit, like <laughs> your right, CD or something me. like. <laughs> would you be interested in buying a subscription to a date with me? <laughs> would you be interested? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I know we're at work but, and I know you're busy, but if it, if I just have a moment of your time, right. please, please step over here. <laughs> but you know we're laughing at him and teasing him, but oh, it obviously man. worked. No, I, I no, how yeah. did no? Because the first time it didn't work. Well, yeah. Okay. So the so first yeah, time the game was whack. But go ahead. Yeah. So the first time I asked Persistence, her, and, though, and, um, that's what the game is. Yeah. So the first time I asked her, she was like, you know, you can't ask me that because I'm your boss. The obvious response. <laughs> <laughs> She and got so, you a fuck out of here. She's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. So She's I like, like, I buy your yeah. subscription for shit. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, that didn't work. So I think it was, I can't remember when that was, but I know the second time I asked her, I remember it was like in the summer. It was either like, it had, I would assume it was like right at the end of that school year. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like the second time I asked her. Cause um, I would go in, I was really, I was only going in there on my days off to see her. So I would be like, you know, can I print my schedule off? I would just always ask that. That's the only reason why I went in there. So, my God! So you you made yourself look like a dumbass, <laughs> like coming in on your day. Can you print the schedule? I mean, well, my two days right ago? across the street. No, oh, my oh, schedule yeah, for just, the week. You, like I'm just coming in. Oh, so you okay? Yeah, because okay. okay. we could always do that. So it was okay. just like, all right, if it was a certain, I mean, obviously I can only do like once a week. So I was like, <laughs> it was like either she here or she not, and then that's it. And so it's like, we'll see what happens. So went in, and then um. The second time I asked her, she was in the back, and once again, it was it was just uh, so I asked her again, and she still said no. And uh, how'd you ask her that time? Do you remember? I think I just asked her. I was like, <laughs> you know I why? I just asked, like, I know. to look at the schedule. <laughs> are you sure with that like no, I, reason why I'm coming here once a week on my day off is to wonder if you're interested in this you know, nah. but I can't remember what I, exactly what I said the second time but like I just asked her again sure, I, was sure, like, sure, I, sure. I know I asked you already but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. would you be interested and she said the same thing but I think it was um, it was me still you know just going in there and I think by the second time she knew I was serious like trying to talk to her and, yeah. and I think she I think so either, so I think either you're that, losing your job or you're getting a date yeah, yeah. so, so yeah, I, yeah 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 because I think after well, that so she was, out, yeah. no, you had a whole internal battle like do I still want to keep working at Hollister <laughs> or do I want to date her fuck so, Hollister and I did. <laughs> so I think maybe after the second time it's probably when she realized like why I was always like getting the schedule and stuff because like I said with us being across the street like we were I would go to the mall anyway just for lunch. Like between classes, I could walk, you know, to the mall. Right. So it made sense that I was in there anyway because it, it wasn't that crazy. But I think that she, after that, she kind of realized it. And then one time I went in there and we were just talking for a while. And she mentioned like that was when she realized like I actually like liked her. So after that, she, um, cause I, remember I was sprinting like crazy. Cause she said she was going to Panera and she was like, you want to go? And I was like, I know what that means. So I was like, yep. And so <laughs> I was, I had like, so you found I think, in. um, 
and I had like a bag of, I think it was because I was probably at school that day and when I went to work, so I had like a duffel bag with my other clothes, and she was like, all right, I was like, all right, I'll meet you there. I was sprinting through the mall so crazy, because I was, I was like parked outside the food court, and she was like the other way. I was sprinting, I was like, I gotta get this. <laughs> I, was, I was running so fast with that bag in my arm, it was so funny. Yeah, but, right, you got to Paneer. And then we cool. talked, and that, you know, that, that was, was kind of the start. Started. That was yeah. kind of the start. Yeah. All right. Five years later. Yeah. What happened, bro? Uh, basically, it was the attention stuff. She felt like she wasn't getting enough, mm. and that was kind of like the spiral that kind of kicked it all off. Mm. And it was just like, we're back and forth after that uh, with us, and it was like, what neither of us were doing, and where I was in life, or where I'm currently at, I guess, in life. Um, you know, trying to work to get basically to where she was, because like, I mean, you know, she was, um, as I mentioned last week, she was uh, five years older than me, so she had already, like, obviously she was the manager, one of the managers at the store, so I'm just like, at that dude, time, yeah, right. at that so, time. Yeah, she was stuff. a little right. bit more, and that, yeah, that's, you know, she was older, so that's, people kind of yeah. can look at that like, okay, she a lot older than him, people say girls are a little bit more mature than guys, which is true. Mm-hmm. That is true. Yeah. So my wife's younger than me, and way more mature. Than you I see, am. so all right. I've seen that like my baby cousins <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like that's one of those weird things you notice know, was like same age for boys and girls. And I was like, that's super weird. That's mm-hmm. insane difference. That's super weird. So that is, it was just basically like okay. So you because are right, you working obviously, and you know you're doing what did it was it like falling apart time with school? Because I mean now you're just working in the YouTube I mean, stuff. Like I mean she works so it was um. I think before when it was like school based, I think it was a bit different because I was like, I mean, I guess it was, you know, how school is always kind of looked at as like that thing you got to do. Um, and after that, it was, I think things kind of stayed the same for a long time where it was like, I kept expecting stuff to change. And so that's what I was so focused on was like that freaking job. Like, you know, I was doing the business, trying to start up a business and how slow that was going and just. Um, yeah, that was the starting the business. I felt we did more with that than me looking for jobs because like True. nobody accepting applications. Right. So it was kind of like that for so long. And for me, it was just like trying to get to where I knew she was because it was constantly like, all right, when I get there, then I can be more of an equal partner, that sort of thing. Okay, I'm gonna chime in with a question. She, so you you at this point where basically you finishing up school, right? And mm-hmm. you you trying to either find a good job, find good employment, or at least start a business where you can, you know, what I'm saying, make, yeah. make money. I mean, how was she in that point? Was she more supportive? What, how, what yeah, was she, she was like? definitely supportive. And um, was it more of like a competitive like castration where like you're like, man, she's a no, little, it, no, um, no, like it wasn't like that. It was just, it wasn't competitive. It was solely based on I knew what she had and I wanted to be able to help with that because mm-hmm. like she already like she had an apartment already. Right. So it was that sort of thing where it's like, all right, I'm hanging out with her at the apartment, that sort of stuff. So I got like a little bit that I can do because I already got, especially after um college it was like all right well now you know paying off starting to pay loans and all you know extra random life crap right so it was more along the lines of just like trying to get on the equal footing to help not to compete or you know be like i'm here right, with her right. or whatever it just was more just to yourself. help yeah, yeah, yeah that sort of thing so you know. it was kind of like that for a super long time and that led that was just like my issue that you know and then there's like other issues like we didn't really talk about we never we I always used to think this even before we broke up, but I was like, I don't know how we make it. It was just like everything in between was like great. It was just like, because we didn't have much in common. Like we had like our nerdy mm. stuff, but she yeah, wasn't I mean, nearly as nerdy yeah. as yeah. me. I mean, I, I, you know, that was something. Like she was a little bit, but not no, nearly no, she, as much she as she me. She into some stuff, but. Yeah. Yeah. And then outside of that, it was like, we didn't really have much. It was like. I like her stuff was mostly it was always like you know political stuff and I hate talking about like political <laughs> stuff like that's just me um so it was always weird I was like man we rarely ever had like a lot to talk about so that was always kind of a thing all right um but that was a big part of it and us like we like I'm not really like, the go out type of person so that was she a part is. of it with the attention stuff uh but that led to like a whole other issue where um I always wonder I was like all right well you never really took me out anywhere either. So it was like always this weird. Oh, back she would and be forth like, thing. Well, you don't take me out. And you'd be like, Well, well we don't go. <laughs> no, it was, it was, you don't take me out. No, like, see, it wasn't just that. It was always like, like even with outside of that, well, it was like, like the talking to the point thing, where like, it was an, like an extrovert and an introvert. So, like, my wife's introverted and I'm extroverted, obviously. And, uh, you know, we have to work on that. Like, you know, when she's ready to go out, I have to appreciate that and know that that means we're doing something. Mm-hmm. Because if she's willing to go, it no matter how I feel, mm-hmm. I have to make that sacrifice. Just like when she feels like, I just want to be home and all that, I have to be like, no, we need to strap our boots on and go, you know. And when it's those kind of differences, if you don't have someone who's willing to make those sacrifices, it's not going to work. 
like and how it, you kind of say, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and it was kind of like that. I think from both of our sides, like I always yeah. said that it was like it was definitely both of us for sure when I look look at it all because it's like I'm you know not being the go out type of person. I would go like every once in a while when like all our friends and stuff went, and that was because every time they went out, it was always to like a club or a bar, and like I hate that. Like I don't yeah, dance, I don't, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't drink. <laughs> I like karaoke. That's I, about it. Like yeah, and you I, don't dance I, or drink or shit. Yeah, the music so it's they like, play, like, like everything. Fuck with. Like even if I like the music, it's like like the three main elements is like stuff I'm not that interested in anyway. But it was never like that's pretty much all it ever was. So basically, like, you kind of just looking like, at incompatibility a little bit. Like you yeah, said, y'all, it was, it was some stuff like, y'all had in common, and you like that, y'all can share that. But it's just like and then like the actual. Like the, the I guess the core stuff was are, just like yeah. super easy. It was just like super simple stuff. But yeah, it was like the not having much in common, so we didn't really talk that much about stuff. And you know, like me, I'm pretty much either video stuff or games. And like me trying to um, do like the photography, videography stuff. And that was pretty much all I got. And yeah, that's now right, hold up, I'm about to play devil's advocate because I know all the women out there are like, mm, but he didn't do this, he didn't do that. So hold on. I definitely didn't do a lot. I'm not uh, saying I'm Shut the fuck blameless. up. <laughs> shut up. Don't defend yourself. You have no defense. <laughs> Guilty until proven innocent. You understand? How come you didn't... I'm getting my Oprah shit. Mm. How come you didn't... Sharing her... Her, uh, you know what I'm saying? Her political... Her passion, dude. Yeah. Oh, the political stuff? Well, no, no, no. no. Or just... Not just political stuff, but... I guess stuff, some, some like... women may ask, why didn't you sort of make that effort into... You know, I know you're passionate about video games, you're passionate about your mm -hmm. YouTube career, but why didn't you channel some of that passion into maybe some of the things she liked? Like, you know, going to a bullshit-ass club. Oh, and I guess a part of that was... Shut up, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Go ahead. And I think a part of that was definitely... You know, what you like versus what you don't like is like me going to the clubs every once in a while and us talking about or not talking about the political stuff or, you know, whatever random stuff. If we go back through like everything, we did talk more about her likes than we did mine mm. because you can always bring up current events. Like right. even if it's like a crappy conversation where it would maybe only be a few sentences because I don't want to talk about it. That came up way more than me bringing up some game thing because I'm like, I'm you know not going to bore her with it. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know she don't care and about then it. It's like, but she felt like, oh, because it is some of the news that you should at least have an opinion on it. Right? Yeah, and I don't have an opinion on it. <laughs> you know, most of those sorts of things. And that's mostly because it just, it bugs me. It's always the same sort of stuff and it's like any conversation that goes into that realm it's it repeats and it's just like i don't i didn't like that stuff before it was popular <laughs> when people always talked about it, it yeah. just like, all this twitter and everybody protesting and being you know and it's just, not activist. just like well, processing it's right. just the crappy stuff in general it's just like i don't like thinking about that as much you know mm -hmm. like a big thing is like it you know in my mind is it takes two people to not talk okay. and just like it takes two people to not go anywhere um because i legitimately asked her one time it was towards the end um why we never like went anywhere or something that I like. She told me I don't like anything. That yeah, you don't like anything. That was a part of why we oh, never so, went anywhere. So because or, that's, why she never took me somewhere. Oh, okay, okay. And it's like, man, I, go I love cause... video games. Like it's like an arcade to... is the easiest thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, man, I ain't about to air out your shit, but I did always notice that, like, yeah, she was we, sort of the you know into the crowds. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I can relate to you because I'm not that into crowds. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. more we like you said. We just more into stuff that we like. Yeah. So I, I and saw a huge that. part of that was definitely the work thing. Because if I had, if that stuff was already done, or at a point where I knew it was working, I wouldn't have spent much time. Because obviously, me having a job, what I do is like the YouTube stuff. That's like pretty much what I do. Like if I'm playing games, it's typically only to film for my YouTube channel. Like I don't even play games as much as I used to because I try to save every game that I like. For the channel so that was definitely a huge thing where it's like that's how i was spending all my time and not realizing like the relationship part it was just like what i was focusing on was for the relationship but it was like in like the weird right. the worst way possible because like, it was like yeah, the, yeah. yeah. well all right how like the what indirect you, effect yeah what would you say who do you lend most of the blame to because it seemed like this was kind of a this wasn't sort of a oh, i'm dumping you type thing this is just more of a we not clicking sort of sort of thing how was that um, I would say Amicably I would put it, blanking up or however you want to put it. I would say it was both of us, but she wouldn't say that. What would she say? That it was me. <laughs> that it was more so you. That it was all me. <laughs> <laughs> like that was one of the actual like arguments. Like everything seemed like it was always my fault. Cause like I said, bringing Is it, up. Hold, um, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Cause we got a married guy sitting right here in the room. I'm not gonna neglect him. Mm -hmm. Cause he need to start disposing his wisdom on us nowadays. Mr. Fantastic, I have a question for you, sir. Yeah. In this situation. Let's say, let's say, in this, let's say you have a situation like this. <clears throat> I don't know if you do or not. Would you say? Because I think maybe some men might say this. I don't know. That as a man, maybe you should try to put 
more of that effort. Because I I noticed that too. Sometimes with um, sometimes with women, they'll say stuff well, like, you know, you you don't do, you supposed to do this, you supposed yeah, to do that. So there's so there's three things that I kind of see in this situation, and one is is like when you're passionate about someone or something, you're boisterous about it. So like, my wife and I, we love hard, we fight hard. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I um, but at the end of the day, she's my best friend. And we talk about stuff and you know, we have a lot of different interests. I mean, tons. Like mm. I'm into anime. She could give two fucking <laughs> shits about it. I have to stay up to like one in the morning to get my anime Dude, fixed if I want to. <laughs> You know, she loves uh, makeup stuff and like watching those kind of videos and you know, that kind of stuff. I could give two shits, but when she's excited about something, I try to uh, put on a happy face and, and share that excitement with her. And, and if you don't have both parties doing that, it's not gonna work. And that's why I whispered, she's not the one because you're gonna, you're gonna find that person that allows you to be passionate about what you wanna be passionate about. I literally at the store the other day let ZZ push the cart around with uh, um, Piccadilly in it, and you know was teaching her that, and you could tell my wife wasn't comfortable with that yet, and she, uh, but she allowed it to happen, and that allowed me to have a better bond with my child, and she was able to allow me to be goofy, like, mm -hmm. and and ZZ to be goofy, because then you know she's like, well I'm gonna run away if I can't push the cart anymore, and she took off down the aisle, and I chased after her and played with her and. <laughs> You know, like, I'm a very goofy person. I have a goofy laugh. I, you know, and and my wife allows me to be that way. She allows me to be the best version of myself. Like, me and my wife are not perfect, but we're perfect for each other. We're perfectly imperfect. Mm -hmm. And that's why marriages don't always work out. And that, but that's why some marriages last 60 years and you don't know yeah. why. And that's why, like, listen, me and my wife have our issues. We've had our issues. We've had fights. We've threatened things. We've done things. But at the end of the day, we stick by each other because I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. Mm. And from what T was saying and talking about, he he could have that life that he had with someone else. He wants something better than that. Mm. And he wants to feel appreciated and he wasn't feeling appreciated. When you find the person, you're gonna feel appreciated. Not all the time, but 90% of the time, the appreciation is gonna outweigh the hurt feelings or the awkward conversations or the hard decisions to make mm -hmm. because sometimes you know better than your spouse just like my wife knows me better than i know myself sometimes and we have to fight for that right and you know your uh, ex wasn't fighting for that and i i don't know i mean i just it, it's 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 hard because i'm in a place where i have a beautiful family and um i love my wife i love my kids i love where i'm at you know and for me like i see everything with a little bit of rainbow you know like this sucks right now for him and it's gonna be hard but that's because the one that's gonna make him the happiest he hasn't found yet and i i, I believe that wholeheartedly you know wholeheartedly because i had a shitty relationship just like you know mm -hmm. but not shitty but just the, it, the way it, it, ended, it, yeah. the way it ended yeah. i i had that before and this is completely different than that i could be mad as shit and pissed off and wanting to do something but i'm always thinking about her always mm -hmm. all the time so i don't know all right man you know we ran out of time. Man, I ain't asking you no more fucking questions. Man. <laughs> shit, you long winded as shit, bro. Dude, we talked about you. Nintendo Switch for 30 minutes, yeah, bro. Man, like, what no, do you mean? No. We're, you're just now figuring out we're long winded? <laughs> Fuck you, man. Yo, but hey, how, hey, look, do this. This, cause this is what we about to do. I'm not done with getting in your business, dog. I'm mm -hmm. not done. I'm never done. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, all right, if y'all listening out there, man, tune in to the very next podcast because if Mr. Fantastic can shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm going to get some more into this dude, Invisible Katana's business. Oh, I know that's what you got saying. into enough of his business. We're going to do it. So if right, You man. asked me a question and I answered it. Fuck you. You gave me a 10 minutes <laughs> soliloquy of some shit that, <laughs> you know, I'm just playing. But hey, man, yeah, go ahead and uh, don't forget to email this dude, Mr. Fantastic, on what to get his wife, man. This dude is a shitty gift giver. I feel sorry for his kids, bro. They about to have a tough oh, time. Oh, no, my kids are fucking set, dude. Like, <laughs> straight dude. up. Okay, so we have a basement and there's a crawl closet, mm -hmm. like a cross place. It's full to the top. Okay. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. I'm full of time. Dude, shut up. I hate you. <laughs> I'm getting Christmas the fuck out of here. But look, man, like I said, let him know where to get his wife. 
We're going to talk about Invisible Katana on the next episode. Y'all follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Anarchist Beats. Where can they follow you, Invisible Katana? I am at Invisible Katana on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget to email us at... Edgeduster at iCloud.com. All right, man. We'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace.